Hi there. Um, so, I bought some Magic cards today for the first time in seven years, and really for the first time seriously in like 17 years. Um, I bought one of these uh, intro packs, the uh, black and red one, uh, and some booster packs. And I thought I would uh, go through the cards that I got and what I think of them, because the internet is a place where boring things like that can be posted online uh, for no really good reason. So I got, obviously, commons, uncommons, and rares, and lands, and I got these weird um, token cards. I finally figured out that they're tokens. I didn't really understand what they were when I first saw them, and then I realized that they had ads on the back. So obviously they weren't normal cards. Um... So I think this is totally pointless. Anyway, let's see what I've got. So starting with the rares, um, I got a Day of Judgment, which is uh, basically a retooling of the old... I'm trying to get centered here. It's a retooling of the old The Wrath of God card from the Revised series. I used to play, you know, when I used to play in the Revised 4th um, Edition era, so my reaction to these cards is going to be through the lens of somebody who played magic at that time. So anyway, um, this has a similar effect to the old Wrath of God card, which was highly sought after at the time, so I assume this is also highly sought after. Uh, so that's a good card. I like that one. Uh, Flame Beast Dragon. Um, this is, ooh, it's a foil. This was actually the foil that came with my intro pack. Um, it's a foil rare. Uh, it has flying, it has this nice little direct damage effect. Uh, it's sort of similar to the old Shibin Dragon from the old series. and But it's a little bit better because you can actually direct the damage anywhere, not just increase its toughness. It also has a higher power and toughness, which is good. Um, Glacial Fortress. I assume this counts as a dual land. Uh, it's got this, It has this extra little limitation on it. Um, you know, it comes in tapped unless you control a plane or an island. You know, in the revised 4th edition Unlimited Era, dual lands were highly sought after. Apparently they still are to this day. I never really got the fascination. Um, it could have been a manufactured scarcity, uh, but I, I don't know. It just having a land that could be one or the other mana just didn't seem like that big of a deal to me. And it still doesn't, but I got a dual land, so I guess I should be excited. Uh, Lord of the Unreal, um, I was never very impressed with these cards that had an effect that only affected one particular type of creature, because really, unless you're building a whole deck around that type of creature, I don't think you're very really likely to have that in play. So, illusion creatures, which I don't even really know what that means, get this special ability with this guy, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's just a um, you know two-mana, two-two creature, which isn't very exciting. Uh, this Monomania card is really cool. It's a foil, as you can kind of see if I fool around with it. Uh, it reduces the player's hand, your opponent's hand to one. Um, it has some cool artwork, which you can't really see because it's very dark. I wonder if I turned it to light, if you could see it better. No, you cannot. It only makes it worse. Anyway, I like this card a lot, and I would totally play with this if I were going to play, which I am not. Okay. <clears throat> um... Pentavis. Uh, I remember being very disappointed when I was a kid, and I would open up a pack, a booster pack, and my rare would be some dopey artifact. For some reason, the artifacts, I, I think in the, re, in the revised set, with the exception of Brass Man, which was a carryover from the Arabian Nights expansion, every single artifact was either uncommon or rare, regardless of how you know, useful they were. And this, you know, it's got this weird counter thing. You can basically split... It's, it's a 4-4 four, four creature that you can split into four creatures and put back into, you know, up to four... You know, it's just... It's a weird little thing, and it's... I don't know. It doesn't really do much for me. Redirect. I don't know why this is rare. It doesn't really seem that exciting. You may choose a new target for a new spell. It's just your standard kind of black or blue mess around with your opponent card, which, you know, whatever. Um, Warstorm Surge, I think this is a cool card. Uh, it's a nice little direct damage effect. Um, if you were playing, I, the deck that I always liked playing when I was a teenager was the Goblin Direct Damage deck. A lot of really cheap creatures that you could power up, 
and a lot of cards that deal direct damage, and this is a perfect um, card for that kind of deck. You know, you just put you, know, you put put a bunch of goblins in every ga and every goblin that shows up, um, you know, basically gets to it, inflict damage on a particular target as it comes in, which I think is neat, and the, and the artwork is good, so this is a good card. And this is my mythic rare. You can see from the special, you know, reddish logo there. Um, it's a six-six creature with fire breathing. It's got a little direct damage effect. Uh, you know, it's basically a big scary monster that has a really high casting cost, and I don't find that very interesting as a rare card. I prefer the <clears throat> I prefer the more nuanced cards. This is basically just a, a big monster that's going to inflict a lot of damage. Um, so there's that. Those are my rares. I will now talk about my uncommons.